<clears throat> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We are here again on the Jermaine Hall Show. Let's talk heavy tonight. I got one of my most special guests, man. I'm telling you, my brother, he always show up for me. I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's none other than my brother Greenwood, star in the building. What's, What's going on, with you, bro? Y'all? What's popping, bro? Good to see you, family. Good I love to see you too. We here, man. We here once again for another Let's Talk Heavy session, and I'm sure I'm almost positive this is going to be effective in every part of the world, what we're about to do tonight. You know what I'm saying? But first, I want to ask, how you feel, man? How you feel? Man, everything is well, man. I can't complain. I mean, I could, but it wouldn't do me no good. Mm -hmm. you know. I swear. So let me tell you something. I, I thought about this pod probably three months ago, right? Yeah. Three months ago. Three months ago, I thought about this pod. I just didn't know who I could put in position to keep it real with me tonight. I didn't know who I could absolutely count on to get on here and do something special with me. You know what I'm saying? And then me and you, as we chopped it up uh, behind closed doors and, and kicked it, I was like, man, star. Why ain't that star? And it's crazy because what do you always tell me? All you got to do is call me. Let me know something. <laughs> and that's the yeah. crazy part. <laughs> Let me know something. Man, just call me, man. I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You say it's too much. You know what I'm saying? But I wanted to uh, I wanted to thank you for being here, bro. I got a little topic that, that was brewing in my little spirit about uh, women. What women do sometimes. So I'm going to play this. And then we'll we'll have a little small conversation about it and then get to the choir. You feel me? Most definitely. Months for a chance is usually the guy who plays you at the end. Like it don't make no sense. Like they'll beg and beg and finally when you give them a chance to play you. Ladies, men are Did you hear what she said? Yeah. Um she said, she said, basically the topic for that is women, you being a lady's last choice. So basically you've been watching her be with everybody. You knew they weren't no good for her. You understood you was ready for her, but she never choose you. You her last choice. Yeah. Have you ever encountered being the last choice before? I think yeah. Um, Did that bother you any? <laughs> nah, because of the, the person that I am. Shit, you know, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It, it's up to you to decide: Are you gonna choose that, or are you gonna move on? You know, you gotta do what's best for you, to where you can look in the mirror. You know what I'm saying? It might yeah. be a, a female from high school, like you was on a bump in high school. You know what I'm saying? She never gave you a chance. She was always running this person, running that person. You know, and, and 10 years later, you know what I'm saying? You bump into it at the store or something, and that she on you. Like, what you gonna do? Do I even still wanna fuck with you? You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or am I gonna fire back and are you good, love, and joy? So, so, for me, being the last choice, I always look at it different. Uh, some think it's low hanging fruit. It's not important, but to me, what's important is did you see me when I was seeing you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, all these choices of what you thought was valuable, then it turned out to be terrible, and now all of a sudden, I'm so valuable. It's hard for me to believe okay. that it takes some time. Okay, I'm gonna say this then. I can knock you off, but shit, I ain't. We can't be together. We can't do nothing above that. That's what I was asking you. Can y'all yeah, be yeah, together? Nah, nah, nah. Well, why you can't be with her if she actually turns out to be a good person? I'm saying, would it bother you to be last place all that time that you spent trying to prove? Because hey, I'm here for you. Because who's to say I still feel the same way I felt back then? I might not feel like that no more. You know that's what I'm saying? Thing. So that's, that's why I say it, it depends on what you. Like I, I could leave alone. I could be like, nah, you know what I'm saying? I'm good. 
you know, or I could be like, man, come on, you know what I'm saying? Or if it's just a situation like that where I'm, I might have known she, she had this going on and that going on and, and she would, you know, she really wanted to holler at me, but she would tie it in with dude at the time. You know what I'm saying? And and that's what it is. Then she, maybe I maybe we could make it work. But I mean, I'm a I'm a kind of the ball in my court. I'm gonna dribble it how I wanna dribble it. Mm. You know, that's just me. I understand that. Uh now I, I got to that. I think the, the worst part about being last, I don't think it's so much being the last choice that bothers me what bothers me would be uh what about me did you not like that you're not telling me about you know what i'm saying because i don't know why you didn't pick me but it might just not have been your turn bro uh, turn is one thing you, know what I'm saying? Saying you still didn't pick me it's yeah. like going to an interview and they tell you we're gonna keep your application on file yeah and then they call you, know, never call you. Uh, you a year know? later you know, yeah, so that, you know, so depending on so depending on what your situation is, shit, you might be in a situation where the job that you got for guys is bullshit. You know what I'm saying? You've been ready to leave. You trying to find somewhere else, and it ain't hit you up. It's what you've been wanting. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it might be a situation where you like, you know, man, they call you. You know what I'm saying? Man, we trying to have you whoop the whoop, whatever, whatever, and you like shit. No, nah, I'm good. I'm straight. Like it depends on where where you at. It so, just depends on the time and the place, bro. That's how it depends on in absolutely. any situation. So uh moving forward, man, we're gonna jump right into this cast, man. Uh first I'd like to thank everybody that's showing up to uh support. Uh the second thing I like to do is help you to understand that this is transparency hour. This is Transparency Hour. We got Miss Tanya in the building. Blessings to you. She said maybe they got to clean up some other situations. I forgot about that. <laughs> but in these times, are women really cleaning it up? Before they holler at you, I want you to save them. Because I've experienced them want me to save them over cleaning up what they got going on. Yeah. Put me right in the middle of the mess. And I'm like... You could have just finished what you were doing then hollered at me. You know what I'm saying? So, Miss Kanika, hello. She says, what are we discussing today? Today is a very special day that I had planned. It's a segment that I had not done yet that I'm happy to be here doing with Mr. Star. Uh, it's question for question. I've always said, I don't like asking all the questions. I'm not above being asked questions. So he giving me question for question. He gonna ask me a question, I'm gonna ask him a question. I don't know how deep it might get, but it, I feel like he gonna try to dig deep as he possibly can to see what's really on my mind in here. You know, <laughs> you know I am. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right you now. I'm not digging deep. Yeah. You say what? I say, you know I'm digging deep. You know what I'm all saying? Right. You gonna dig so, the same way? You up first, big dog. There you go. So, what is your mental one through ten? Ten being the highest. Currently, currently, uh, my mental state, I give it about a six because six. there's so many people that have passed at the same time. That's heavy on me. You know what I'm saying? Families are suffering. Uh, friends, loved ones, everybody crying and trying to really figure out, you know, how they're going to move without their loved ones. And uh, it's, 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 it's weighing on me because it's touching close to home. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I give it about a six. Though life is good, I'm blessed. I'm usually at about an eight or nine. You know what I'm saying? It's always room yeah. for improvement. So the real answer would be about a six because I'm actively thinking about the families that are sus suffering. And, and I like to say rest in peace and, and love and light and, and, and prosperity, prosperity to those that have recently lost somebody because it's like seven or eight families right now. Yeah. In my close vicinity that just lost, you know, father, brother, sister, mother, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, cousin that they felt like they was brothers and sisters. So 
that loss, I don't take it lightly. And my heart goes out to you. You know what I'm saying? Some people yeah. feel like you're here tonight watching this, but they grieve it. Yeah. So, so, so I'm going to ask, so I'm going to say this with that question, like, okay, well, what you said, you telling me about everybody else, like what, like you, what, what's going on with you in your life mentally? I, I get that, you know? Oh, I'm um, up. Yeah. So that, that's why I I'm, asked I'm you on your mental, like, like when I say your mental, mental, like when you walk in the house with me, you know what I'm saying? Like you might come over to my crib, like, you know what I'm saying? What's your mental one through 10, like right now? What you got going on right now? What you got in your hands right now? And if, if, if it is a six, say it is a six. You know what I'm no, saying? It's a six. Okay. So what did you? Because my mind and my heart is with them. It's not most definitely. Most definitely. I can't knock that. Yeah, that's why I'm saying it's hard for me to think straight, knowing I love them too. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I carry what they carry. In. And that's that's part of being an empath. You know what I'm okay. saying? You, you start to feed off the energy of others, which is why you know me. I don't be around a lot of people. Yeah. Cause yeah. they're gonna rub off on me easy. I'm gonna start feeling what they feeling. And and they don't even know I'm feeling it heavier than them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that 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 bothers me. So I, I gotta stay in my own own bubble most of the time just to make sure I'm I'm tip top and I'm straight. Can I yes. handle? Can I handle rooms where it get heavy? Absolutely. Yeah. Most I can move from a room full of vultures and wolves, but I wouldn't like two seven days a week. Yeah. So, so with your with your level being a six, what are we gonna do to change it? And this go for everybody. Anybody that's listening, like you know, mm -hmm. if your if whatever your level is, what are we gonna do to fix it? What are you gonna do to fix it to make it? That nine, that ten, or that eight, or whatever. I'm already in motion uh, forward. Like I go to therapy weekly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I get my exercise in. I get my prayer corner going. I, I got my regimen, and it's yeah. it's proven worthy to continue because it's worked and brought me so far. Uh, okay. I don't have to sit in a pile of hurt. I don't have to sit in, a, I got brothers like you that I could call, you know what I'm saying? And say, yeah, I don't know if I'm tripping, but hear me out. And then y'all give me what you see, you know, on the lower spectrum of things. Like you really just be like, look, man, that's surface shit. Go deep. Yeah. It's bigger than what you're thinking about. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't exactly. funny, like you don't let me go too deep with something that don't matter, right? Yeah. So I got accountability partners, I got therapists, I got a loving circle. Yeah. It's not so big, it's damn near like a dot. <clears throat> Miss Tanya, the therapist in my in my uh chat, she say, Oh, he is therapizing. <laughs> now nah, he just potting tonight, you know what I'm saying? But I like it. I like it, I like it. <laughs> She's on terrorizing. No, therapist. She said you mm. doing therapy for me right now. Okay, you know? yeah, most definitely. Yeah. But see, this the this the side that people don't know about me though. Exactly. Like this is an everyday question with anybody that I love. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but you don't get away. You don't get away. Most definitely. What's up? My, What's question? My question now. Why do you think men minimize their hard work in relationships? Do you understand where I'm coming from with that question? Yeah. Um, I feel like um, it's not for us to glorify. You know, if, if I'm, I know I got a family at home and I love my family. Like, it ain't no, no question about it. Like, I, you know, so, I mean, um, they know what I do. You know, my son know what I do. My old lady know what I do. Um, they, I don't have to broadcast that every day that I do something, you know, if I buy you something to eat or if I if if we go half on a bill and I pay the whole bill and tell you, you know, just work on this because you got this going on or whatever the case may be. Like, you know, I'm always take the short end of the stick for my family. You know, that's me. That's, that's my problem right there. That's what I'm asking. What? Taking the short end of the stick. While we sit so comfortable 
and highlighting the woman and her greatness in the relationship yeah. and we take the back seat on how dope as of a man we are it's yeah. not until we get done wrong that we yeah. want to talk about how great yeah. we were but but okay so if you if you have a woman or a lady that, that uplifts you you know from time to time that like she might she might come to you she might text you out of nowhere you know you at work she at work and she like you know i just want to let you know you know what i'm saying that uh i appreciate everything you do for our family and you do this and do that and i appreciate it like man you gotta have a woman like that you know what i'm saying if she's not she's supposed to broadcast and and uplift it you ain't got to you doing it so if you got an old lady or, or a wife whatever the case may be and you doing this this and that and and you know she's not honoring you like you honor her like she might cook a meal or something you know like man you know bad that shit is good with the woo you know what i'm saying you did your thing like that lift her up you know it might not seem like a lot but that that means a lot you know when it come down to it so it's just about uplifting each other you know what i'm saying taking taking that, that step forward back to my original question i'm not involved in the partner okay I'm not involved in take her out of it. Right? Okay. Yes, I, I I respect reciprocity. As Miss Kanika says here, uh, reciprocity matters. Yeah, absolutely. I'm talking about us as men. Why do we shy away from feeling like saying, just coming out and say, it, do you think it's the modesty is a part of our masculinity or do you think it's uh, us just saying, whether it go good or go bad, we're going to suffer in silence. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. You think yeah, that's just I mean, a quote unquote manly thing to just shut up and do it? Because yeah. I've witnessed women standing right beside me that I never met in my life in a store. So my girl did this for him, did that. Yeah. And they just hyping her up like, girl, go, you know, this, that, and th How come yeah. Bruh, took my old lady to dinner last night, lit. That we don't even have them conversations. It's almost like just because it's an unwritten law that we're supposed to provide. Yeah. And then the Taco Bell. Yeah. But as soon as she go bad, what are we screaming to the roof? Man, I did everything for that girl. How we know? You ain't yeah, we we'll wait till the last minute type shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah. said that in 13 yeah. years that y'all been together that you did. So I was supposed to know. Because, like, well, we don't get no cool points for that shit. We don't get no cool points for that. Why? I don't know. I mean, hey. I, I give you all the accolades. It's, it's, yeah. You a badass daddy, boy. I want to yeah. say that right now. You got a brand <laughs> newborn on this world. You've been kicking ass as a father. You and yeah. co parents being together, Post right? What I've been doing ever since you've been fathering your child, bigging you up. Man, building me up. Any chance I building get, any wisdom I got. I'm throwing yeah. it at you because I understand that that pat on that back is bigger than that. What you're taking yeah. in is I'm on the right path and I'm going to stay on that. Yeah. Yeah. But see, sometimes that. sometimes yeah. you got, man, when a motherfucker ain't patting you on the back, sometimes you got to pat yourself on the back. See, I know how to pat myself on the back, bro. You know what I'm saying? I got 12 hands then. It is, <laughs> man, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? For real. Because because sometimes like you might be suffering in silence and 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 a person that you feel like like it might be like I might be suffering and then you call me and you can't even tell that I'm suffering. So you don't say nothing about it and I'm slick screaming for help for real. What I'm gonna do? Crash out because you ain't tell me you I was doing a good job. I gotta I gotta tell myself, bro, you doing it, man. Keep going until somebody else tell me keep going. And that's going to be the motivation for me to keep going. Well, you up you know? next with your question, man. But, so, um, has drinking ever messed up a relationship for you? And if so, then are you afraid to drink in relationships? Or are you, are you straight? Like, is that something you can deal with or not? Good Lord. Really? Yeah. Tonight? Yeah. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna read what we'll, we'll come right back to this. Give me a second on that because that's a big question. Uh, I'm gonna read uh, something we skipped over, and I don't want to skip over what they're talking about in the comments. Okay. Mr. Tobias, he says, I am a four uh, as far as mental health is concerned. He says, mine is taking me time to heal. Just I just got my degree on the 15th, so the wound just got my decree on the 15th, so the wound is still fresh, but I'm leaning on my circle to get me up. Make sure you call me, bro. Uh, I know what it feels like to leave a marriage, too. So, and I understand the strain from I, it feels heavy. It's heavy. Some people are ready to leave, but the after effects is something they can't prepare for. Yeah, right. That's serious so, business. I do understand what you're saying. And that four will quickly turn to an eight or nine as soon as you start to understand what your future got to offer. And that's a word I want to leave with you is to not quit. Only quitters lose. You know what I'm saying? So get up every day understanding that your future is brighter than your past. You, you, feel me? you know me, bro. We are brothers in arms. You know what I'm saying? So you know me. I don't speak just to be talking. You're going to yeah. get right back up. Right now, allow yourself to feel everything and get up. Star, you got something for it? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, um, it's not a bad thing when you, like, if you got a low number. You feel me? Um, I feel like with you even acknowledging your number, period, it's always like uh, that's that's always a stepping stone to move up. Like, bro, you know, all right, boom, I'm at a four. I know I'm at a four. Some people can't even say what number they're on because they, they mind is so chopped and screwed. So um, take that time to, to think about that number, evaluate that, and, and figure out what to do to lift the number up you know what i'm saying that, that's the biggest thing man find ways to lift it if you gotta talk to somebody if you gotta kill some vices with the situation um man sometimes you might just have to cry and and figure out how you feel after you get done crying and did that like i'm not no no gangster 24 7 you know i'm I, I got feelings too i hurt too you know what i'm saying i love too so Man, it's all right. Bro, it's all right. You're going to be all right. Man, just figure out what it takes to lift it up, bro, and, and go from there. I like that. I like that. That's the word. Uh, so your question to me was, has drinking ever messed up a relationship for me? The answer is yes. Um, I used to drink heavily to hide plenty pain. Uh. I used to drink to forget my mistakes. I used to drink to forget that I'm mistreating my lady. I used to drink to forget everything that was messed up in my life. Um, so yes, it messed up a couple of relationships. However, I was never, uh, when I say I was messed up in relationships, I was messed up personally, but I wasn't given so much of that. My, I'm guilty of pushing them away before they see what's messed up. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was shielding them from the worst part. So they thanked me for it today, but it still pushed them away and it still caused havoc. You know what I'm saying? Most definitely. So now if we want to talk about me messing up something, I messed up communication big time relying on that bottle you know what i'm saying yeah. so now you said if so am i afraid to drink in relationships now absolutely not okay should i uh accomplish my goal of remarrying and living a full happy life with a family right mm -hmm. i absolutely drink to enjoy myself now I have a few sips. I don't drink to be out of control. I don't drink to argue. I don't drink to fish for trouble. Yeah. That's what I was doing then. I learned so, from it. So is it safe to say that that was liquid courage? Uh, No, 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 no. I, well, in my previous- Not, not so much as to like saying it's going to make you do something that you would have taught yourself, but like making decisions, like decision making. Mm. 
I'm gonna tell you. So I would get drunk way before I see my girl. Mm -hmm. Cause she worked at night, got off 11. I'm off at five when I was in the military. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes yeah. a little bit later, depends. But I was off before, I was drunk before she saw me, right? Okay. Any little thing that she did, me and her was so confrontational, it wasn't gonna slide. I was yeah. on her, she was on me back. You know what yeah. I'm saying? She was backing down. It caused that. Then a lot of nights we both had sex about it. Yeah. But we ain't fixed the problem. So guess what? Tomorrow repeated. Man, that same problem. She come through, <laughs> she started drinking and doing her smoking. I started drinking. We back at it again. End up in the bed. Ain't nothing resolved. And it kept going for years. Yeah. Until yeah, we just deep. didn't speak again. You see what I'm saying? So then when I took the three and a half years off of drinking, my mind was sharp. My mentality, my spirit started tugging on me saying, it's more to you than what you're going through. Yeah. So I had to let God orchestrate my steps. At some point, he brought me straight to my knees. I was at my lowest point. Now yeah. I can have a drink. And we in the best mood ever because I have no intentions of harming or, or disrespecting or being confrontational over nothing. You know what I'm saying? I don't harbor all those hurt feelings. I don't harbor any, any of those things that would be negative going yeah. into the situation. Say what you're saying. I see it in your uh. Bro, I, honestly, like, I didn't see you drink. I done been around you drink. I've never seen you drunk. Like, I've never, like, you know, and I'm not saying that because you my homie and no shit like that. Like, I'm dead serious. Like, I've never seen you just sloppy drunk or or just, like, man, like, you might get a little loud, a little, like, man, bro, bro, feeling this hell. Like, I've never seen you like that. Well, you won't. And, and here's the reason why. Uh, I even knew my limit back then, but I was forced to go over my limit because it wasn't stopping my brain from saying, hey, you still got debt to fix. Yeah. So by the time I, yeah. I was blackout drunk, I can't remember nothing, let alone my name. Yeah. Let alone the, the, the female in my bed. What's her name? Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I was thinking to that point. Now, you would never catch me out of control or slipping because, baby, best believe, I got that buzz and I'm on my feet. Man, I'm telling I'm you, that's where I'm motherfucker. Away, simply because I know what it could cost me to be slipping. Yeah. And my life is number one. My family will suffer behind a, a huge mistake, number two. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? And I'm not yeah. willing to go through that or put yeah. somebody else through me making a mistake and they have to suffer for it. Yeah, that's real. Not, that's a big cost. Yeah, it's that's real. Big. I can't afford that. Yeah, that's serious business, though. Some people can't afford it. I can't yeah. afford it. Can't afford that. Nah, that that's I can't it. afford it. <laughs> Ms. Tanya said that alcohol never made you forget because when the buzz clears, that problem is still there and possibly worse. And, and, and let's get rid of the word possibly because it was absolutely worse every time. Yeah. Man, my grandma used to tell me that though. She'd be like, boy, you man, you drank that shit, man. That, that problem gonna come, right? As soon as you wake up in the morning. Mm. If it, and you're gonna feel silly as hell. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's coming in the morning. I think my the worst thing I ever did in this past year or so is I I don't go nowhere if I if I want to get lit lit right I party in my living room yeah it's my club right see that's me that's me because I used to trip I used to go to the club and be tripping and all that shit man probably, probably on here right now like yeah 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 he used to, <laughs> yeah I was one of them you know what I'm saying but. Shit, man, you so got man. Once, once, once you got people that tell you about yourself, you know what I'm saying? Then you can really like that. That's the thing, man. You gotta have people that you really care about that that's gonna tell you about yourself. I got brothers in my life that they gonna man. I don't give a damn, man. They gonna man. Hey, look, yeah, he, yeah, all that's cool, but you know you was tripping last night. 
Yeah, for sure. You know, and make me feel this little. But they don't do it to belittle me. You know, they do it for, for self-evaluation, for something to, to look off of, to be better. For sure. You know? So for me, uh, I never thought about how my drinking made other people feel. So when I got lit in my living room recently in past years, I called a few people. I had to get some shit out of my chest. I called him, went the fuck out, didn't even remember the next morning, had to do a whole bunch of apologizing, right? But I wasn't apologizing for what I said. I was apologizing for waking him up because it's 2, 3 in the morning. <laughs> what that? You bullshit. Completely. You bullshit. <laughs> because it had been festering, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and in person, they acting like, Ain't nothing wrong. So that started to bother me. Like, they bro, love you. I know what you said. So I'm calling to get it off my chest at 2 33 in the morning. Yeah, but see, they, they love you for one. But and they, then you but been they doing wives it. was picking up. That's what yeah, she came to me the next day. Yeah. I done woke up somebody that ain't had nothing to do with what I was thinking. Nothing about. to do with nothing. She thinking, like, damn, it's an emergency because Jermaine don't call. Yeah, yeah. Whole time, and now she got sitting there in the bed. They probably the made love, went to sleep. I done woke them up like it's emergency. And they hear me screaming drunk in the phone. Nah, nigga, you could have just looked me in my face and told me. He like, bro, I don't know what you talking about. Yeah. Man, shameful when I woke up the next day. Then I realized, okay, getting too faded ain't for me no more. Yeah. It just ain't for me. I don't want to apologize the next day. Yeah, it take yeah. a lot to do it too. Yeah, you, you know the uh, time that it that it take looking at that phone to really <laughs> to build up the courage to call this motherfucker. <laughs> thirty seconds. And that motherfucker bad as hell. Took me thirty seconds. Real shit. So I had every name on the list in my yeah. mind already. The only problem was I was seeing triple. And I might have got the name messed up, dialed the wrong number, then found the right yeah. name. Oh. Yeah, then you got that when you wake up saying. in the morning. For sure. Now I'm going to get to my question on you. What is yeah. your fascination with the streets, man? No <laughs> transition been so dope <laughs> to me. Oh, man. But it seems like it's one foot in, one foot out to me. It ain't, though. It. I mean. I mean. I don't know. So this is the question yeah. to you. I told like, you you're going to dig a little bit. Yeah. My cousin used to tell me that shit all the time. He tell me, stop. Man, she ain't even got a hustle in the hood, man. You can goddamn do this, this, and that outside the hood. And then you can go to the hood and, and see Mickey and shit. You catch a couple of sales over there. And, uh, man, you know, but you ain't got to make your money over there. You ain't going to make no money like that. But, um... My fascination with the streets would probably be that shit was the only thing that made me feel like somebody other than my mama, my grandmama, and Justin. So, you know, that's why I got them all tatted. You know what I'm saying? My mama on my arm, my grandmama on the other side, Justin on my neck. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's why I say that shit in temporary fixes when I be like, all my tattoos ugly, but they all mean something. I got the goons on my hand. I got 21 jump greenwood on my arm. Like all those things are symbolic. You know, they all made me feel like I was somebody when nobody else did. You know? So yeah, that's 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 where my love comes from and like that attachment, you know what I'm saying? And um man, it's 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 bad in certain aspects because it's like Damn, bro, you know what I'm saying, man? You can you can be better. Like you can you can make your like I figured out that I can make myself likable in other places than the hood. So yeah, I do got that, you know, I do want to go back to the hood. You know, I'm I'm one of them niggas that yeah, I'm being the hood. You gonna look up and see me in the hood every once in a while, you know, but um not like I used to be. But yeah, that's that's the reason why. You know, that shit made me feel like somebody. Like I was, I was special. I had status. You know what I'm saying? Uh, P 
people love me, kids love me, the mothers love me, the ghetto mamas love me. They, you know, I go in their houses, I buy sodas, I, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just, it, it's, it's where that undying love come from. But then it's all the chaos around it though. That's, that's the shit that you be like, are you tripping? You, you know what I'm saying? You don't need to, yeah. It's the chaos around it. it. Ain't the hood like they don't understand the hood, you know. All they see is is the gunshots and the the drugs being sold. Uh, motherfucker got their ass kicked. Like, but it's real love over there. It's them real heartwarming mothers and kids and and you know. So yeah, that's probably where my fascination comes from. I love the hood. So it was really, it was really more so. These are the people that I love. This is why I'm here. It's not so much what's being done. It's the people. Yeah. Cause okay. you got cause cause okay, say say this. Boom. Like, we're gonna take you for instance. So you might go to the project and um you might go to Greenwood or or slide say I'll be all over. It don't, it ain't just one hood. You know I'll be all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um you might go to the projects. And man, we go over there, motherfuckers arguing, or you know, uh motherfuckers shooting motorcycles down the street, or, or somebody might be like, Man, look, man, go ahead and get out that way because somebody's shooting that's gonna come through, or whatever the case. Like you're hearing all the negativity in the hood. So in your mind, not being from over there or not adapting to this lifestyle, it's like Man, let me get on away from over here. Like, what the fuck going? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. I might go over, I might go to the hood and and like I might go to the slab. I might go and miss Deborah back back though. You know what I'm saying? She in the back though. She playing tongue. You know, she got sodas for sale. You know what I'm saying? Cakes or you know, she might got a shot for you, a cigarette. Or I might go in Mickey house and Mickey bacon. She, you know what I'm saying, selling slices of pies and you know, she she might have Sunday dinner on this this table and it's Thursday or my ain't nutter. She over there, she having a fish fry in her, you know what I'm saying? Or or some kids might run up to me like, man, you made a song, I'm ready to get in the video tomorrow. I might just see my little cousin boo and give him a hug, like, damn, bro, I miss you. You know what I'm saying? I ain't seen you in a minute. Like that's that's what I get out of the hood. It's not the the oh man, she you know shit going on or you know. So it's it's all about how you interpret it. Like if you ain't interpreting it right, then shit, it's it's gonna feel like that. But that's my home. That's why I came up at. You know, if that, that makes cool. sense. No, that make that makes sense. Your question for me is. So let me think of how to say this. Is carrying trauma something you've become comfortable with? Trauma, trauma is not something I've ever become comfortable with. It's something I just had to do. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's life. I think that I don't like the triggers. I don't like the. Uh, I don't like the time that it takes to get over it. You know what I'm saying? I don't like nothing about it but it's a challenge it, it builds you mm -hmm. keeps you grounded it, it gives you the lessons uh to to equal wisdom right but yeah. to, to become comfortable means that i'm now stagnant now i'm sitting in it yeah right so if yeah. i'm sitting in it what am i learning if i just became comfortable with it i'm content that that would bother me if i'm not going forward right so no i'm not comfortable with trauma what i am though what i absolutely am is aware i'm yeah. aware that trauma is there i'm aware that i have triggers i'm aware that some things probably will never go away i love big mom i miss her granny was the 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 glue you know what i'm saying my mama yeah. picked up the torch you know what i'm saying so but that's a love that I can't never put down or forget, much yeah. like anybody else that lost a parent, you know what I'm saying, that was close to them. Yeah. So the trauma I'm never comfortable with, but I'm absolutely aware that it's there and I'm okay to talk about all of it. 
Yeah. People have a problem communicating that it's still there. I want to I want to ask you something else about that. Um, so, how do you feel about the word "I love you"? That phrase is amazing to me because I only say it when I absolutely mean it. Yeah, uh, see, like, however, but it's a confusion though. Okay, uh, I love you. Is levels to "I love you." Mm -hmm. uh, different relationships cause for different types of love. Uh, some people say, no, nah, there's only one love. You in or you out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, my dog want to join, man. In the state, if in the building, blessings. Let me hit you with the, the link, bro. Give me a second. So, uh, love, I'm not afraid of that. A lot of people are. They're afraid to say, I love you. Yeah. I love you. I think about you all the time. Uh, this is how I feel right now. But soon as shit get hard, they forget that they love that yeah, person. I love you so much. Yeah. So, so but, this is why. This that's why. That's where I don't argue with them and tell them they don't. They never loved me. See, yeah. I never been the guy to say that bitch never loved me. I never say that because yeah. I understand that unconditional love may not be for humans. We're not perfect. Yeah. We come so, with conditions just to be with somebody, right or wrong. Right. So, Just so to be with somebody we set a standard. That's already eliminating unconditional. Yeah. So the reason why I say that is because um, I come from a family to where um, now I'm not saying my family don't love me or nothing like that. I definitely get major love for my family. You know what I'm saying? My mama's side. But they're not big on saying I love you or or hugs or nothing like that. Like, but you know that they love you because of the things that they do for you and with you and things like that so it's like you might take you might take that with you and walk with it and you might find somebody that you love or or you might uh have a homie or your child come you have a kid and it's like you don't use the word so it's like, but it might throw them off because we in a world where people use love loosely. Like anybody will tell anybody they love them nowadays. So how do you transition that? Like, you know, um, is that a part of trauma? Is what I'm what I'm asking you. Is that trauma or is that just a bad trait? I'm not sure if it's trauma. But yeah, absolutely it's trauma. Uh to go without something. And then realize you were supposed to receive it and absolutely be trauma, right? Yeah. It can absolutely be trauma. However, how you handle it moving forward can speak to how well your life goes. I don't think that everything that happens to us is supposed to affect us forever. We've had breakups that we don't wake up and think about those people no more, no matter how yeah. much they did, right? Most definitely. So let's just say for a minute, let's just say for a minute, I'm not in tune with how I was treated here or there. I'm not in tune with uh, what such and such said, right? Mm -hmm. But I think about how I move forward is what absolutely determines where I'm going. Yeah. yeah. Because you say it, you never telling me you love me should not affect me forever when it's so many people to have. Yeah. yeah. And it might not come from who you desired it to come from, but the, who it did come from was genuine. Most definitely. A stranger didn't know you three minutes. I love you, brother. Thank yeah. you for the kind words and the hug. Thank you for this $3. I'm homeless. And ain't nobody yeah. gave me no money. But this $3 is going to buy me that hamburger. Because for two days, I've been needing a hamburger. Yeah. I don't know why I'm craving it. I just ain't had it in years. Yeah, and, that and you gave one, it to me. And you gave it to me. I love yeah. you. Yeah. Your mama never told you she loved you. But this stranger just filled that void over three dollars yeah 
And that's because like that's like quick guy it work. It was the it was more than the three dollars. Yeah. It was the impact. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm not gonna measure, I don't sit on my pod and measure pain. I never do that. Because the brain registered registers pain the same way from physical to verbal abuse, right? Yeah. Pain is just pain. The shit hurt. But how you react and how you respond is how your the future absolutely wrong. has to be decided. You That's see what I'm real. saying? So uh I got a few comments. Miss Miss Tanya said, I think we forget. I think we forgot love to mean I don't like you right now, but I still love you. Uh, a yeah. lot of people do forgive, forget that. Uh, marriages. Marriages. Deep combo. Listen, bro, I didn't marry you to be happy every day. Yeah. That yeah. wasn't even in the vows. It said for better or for worse. For better or for worse. It better never said... Worse. To be happy every day. If that were the case, I don't think marriage would exist. But biblically, for my God, he said, once I have sex with you, baby, you mine. Yeah, hey, it's over with, baby. Imagine us <laughs> looking <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> it's over with. It's over with, baby. You belong to me. With. I belong to you. You know what I'm saying? And that's where they start throwing in them two words, soul ties. But really... Sex was supposed to just be marriage. Once you consummate, you're married. Right? Yeah. So hookup culture, that's why you're so confused when you're giving your body to somebody that don't deserve your body. Well, you got to test it for your driver, Jermaine. I mean, dang. Huh? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> hey. I'm talking shit. I'm talking shit. No, 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 no. Real shit, though. That's, that's yeah. real shit. That's how they think. That's how they feel. Right? Mr. Yeah. Mortar. Miss Montez, blessings, welcome. Miss Tracy, blessings, welcome. Everybody else, Miss Marcia, blessings, welcome. Um, Tobias, he had to say, um, I had to have a talk with my dad about that. He said that he always loved us, but he grew up in a household where the phrase was not used normally. Conditioning. Conditioning. You have to literally understand who you are encountering as a partner. Who you considering? Can I handle that they've never been told I love you so they don't say it? Yeah, that shit deep though. That shit deep. It's Talk deeper to me than about it's deep because I didn't grow up like that. Yeah, I definitely grew up like that. Like that shit deep, bro. But I but I had to I couldn't I could just look at my format of the situation, like I gotta, you know what I'm saying? As I talk, like my grandmama tell me, like, man, Big Daddy ain't coming to the house to tell everybody that he loved it. Man, that might work from sun up to sundown. Came home, we want something to eat. God damn it, and and leave him alone. Let him watch his, his westerns. That's what it was. That's my grandmama. So it trickles uh, down. What do we know about those times though? What do we know about those times? Shit, nothing. Those times times except what they different. tell us. No, those times were very different than today. Technology was different. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Most uh, definitely. Spending time was different. Uh, they also thought very different because of what was going on outside. Yeah. And they also and had... And your black and ass did not walk to a certain store or you're going to get hanged. Yeah, real shit. It was serious business back then. Today, don't go to a certain part of town or the police going to pull you up and blow your brains out. Yeah. Because it's a sundown town. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it might be very different. The weapon used, the rules might have changed, but it's still, still the same like the, thing. the ghetto. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And your, own people, and your own people will do it to you this time. Before the Before opposition. Now. Yeah, real don't want to see you in, right? Real so time. being that we come from a long line of strife and pain, yeah, I have to forgive what my parents didn't do, yeah. ending what they had to face. And we not understanding where the knowledge coming from. Uh, our parents didn't teach us uh, a lot about financial literacy. Mm -hmm. 
I was upset for a long time about that. I'm like, why he know that? And my people didn't tell me. And then I thought about it. Wait a minute. Today, I'm like, 30. And it was the year of she she ain't know. That's what I'm saying. They ain't have what they said. How the fuck they gonna teach you something now? <laughs> <don't know> yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's be real now. But you know what else I looked at? What's up? My kid might be saying the same shit about me right now. Why my dad ain't tell me that? Real talk. Because things are moving so fast. This is the age of information. This, this the microwave generation. Everybody right. want that shit right now. Right. They want it right now. Yeah. This is, see back then was that that bag of cake. Hey, everybody in here, sit sit y'all ass down. Don't be moving around in my kitchen. Y'all gonna make my cake fall. It's gonna take a while. Go outside and play or something. See, that took time back then. Mm. Time, dedication, knowledge. You know what I'm saying? This is what my grandmama's grandmama taught her to tell me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But let them eggs do what they, you know what I'm saying? What, man, whatever the case was. Well, I got a question for you. I ain't gonna speak What's on up? that. Give me some. We're gonna, move, we're gonna move forward. How did you react to having a broken heart after a breakup, sir? <laughs> you really want to know? You so street and you so tough. Hey. Give me the real Teflon Don answer. Uh, I act like my heart wasn't broke and I cut off the motherfucker that hurt me. That's what it was. You. You didn't lied. even say it again? You, you lied to again? you and her? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever it takes, nigga. Shit, my heart broke. No, no. She broke my heart. Okay. I ain't break I'm her. asking you to tell me what you went through behind the scenes. I ain't talking about the part. Shit. Now, I ain't do all that crying and all that shit. I mean, but if that's you, then, you know, and that's why how you get it out there, you get it out. But shit, I was just sick. Hell, I'm, I ain't want to eat. Hell, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm stressed out. I'm thinking about it all the time. Um, I Man, I don't want to deal with nobody else at the time. I probably wanted my baby back for real. But, I mean, shit, it, it got to the point where it's like, hell, well, if she ain't responding to me or, you know, I ain't I ain't with all that, go knock on your door, be with the bullshit, all that. But um, if, I'm, if I call you and you ain't responding or you don't want to work it out or whatever, then shit, I, I gotta be hard on myself now. So shit, I'ma just cut you off, cut our ties of you. You know what I'm saying? I'ma go on my shit, I'ma seclude myself, and the the train gonna continue to roll. And I'm gonna get through it, whatever it takes. Shit, I, I. I asked you that because I thought I was the only one. And it hurts. I ain't, bro. I'm not sitting here saying that. I'm the strongest nigga in the world and, and stodges. Oh man, he man, it hurt. I done been hurt. I right, man, man, listen, high school hurt. I'm talking about I was with this motherfucker for probably about two, three weeks. <laughs> like two, three thing, weeks. You know? Now see high school don't count. I'm talking about when you was in young. I'm doing shit, nigga. My heart was broke. Fuck you mean, nigga. Hell yeah, yeah, it counts. Shit, fuck you talking about. Hell yeah. I, you lucky I can't say the motherfucking name. Goddamn it shit. <laughs> Boy, me weak. Hey. But guess what though? You know what I'm saying? It was about it was about three days like yeah, I'm talking about bro, my heart falling down my chest type shit. But after them three days, shit, shit kept going. Like I like I, I walked out the classroom and motherfuckers were still going to class and shit was still going on. You know what I'm saying? Life was still going on. Shit, my world ended. But the world's still turning. You know what I'm saying? So once I realized that, then it was just kind of like, man, shit, hey, bro, be hard on yourself, seclude yourself, whatever you need to do. You know, talk to who you need to talk to or don't talk to nobody. And shit, shit got better, bro. That's what it is. Okay. We're going to segue. Move on into your question. Uh, I don't want to answer you. <sighs> All right. Uh, what makes you confident in your decision making process? I'm not always confident. Uh, man, that's complicated. So it's layers to that question. 
Yeah. Uh, I move mostly by faith because I don't know what this journey I'm on has to offer, right? So mm -hmm. when I make decisions, if you want to use the word confident, I'm confident in what God got done. Okay. God ain't never let me go somewhere that he wasn't protecting me or putting me through a test, right? Yeah. So I'm confident in the fact that ain't nothing going to happen and he don't want to happen. Yeah. I'm not confident in the plan I had. Uh, I love having my creative space and living in it and, and giving it to people and just letting them critique it, tear it down or build it up, whichever one, right? I love the process of creativity because what it does is develop you. Mm -hmm. You get the feedback of, yeah, that was just all right. Oh man, you get back in the lab and you go harder. Yeah. If you love what you're doing. So, so I'll, it also tests that. Yeah. But my de decision making process, the confidence comes from I just love that God put something in me. He put something in me and he's developing it and it keeps coming out in layers. So, my yeah. confidence comes from man, I've done things. That I can't even remember planning. It just came out on the spot. Jokes out yeah. of crack that, so, that extended so far. So I want to ask you this. So um, say you you got to make a split second decision, and um, this is serious. This is a serious situation where you you slick in your mind. You feel like you got to make the right choice at this moment. If you was to make the wrong choice. What do you do to process it and and make the right choice? Or, I'm never you know, what do I'm you never, do to clean it up? I'm never timid. Uh, I'm not afraid to fail. The, the biggest thing I learned uh, along my journey is being afraid to fail, you'll never win. Right? Yeah. I learned that from the grace. The first person that told me that was Michael Jordan back in the 90s. He said, I learned how to lose first, then win. Then win, yeah. And that was like, what does that even mean, right? Yeah. So then, not even a couple of months later, uh, 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 who was it? I think it was Master P doing mm -hmm. an interview on one of them street mixtape interviews back in the day, the DVDs. Yeah. He damn near said the same thing. He was like, yeah. oh, man, I done lost so many times. I learned how to win. Man, Master P, cold with it, boy. Hey, that's a, that's a serious thing. Anybody man, that right? made $500 million in two years, in I got to listen to you. <laughs> in the trunk. <laughs> out the trunk. <laughs> I ain't never got $500 million out my trunk before. Man, listen. I got a good amount. Just so, so think about how many bumps in a row he had before he even made the five, man. Everybody told him no first. That man took a hundred slaps in the ever, face. Before he ever got a yes. The That's record the is, he broke it in the field. You see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But for me, that's what I've been experiencing for the past yeah. four years is all the no's. Yeah, yeah. I and got one say yes. It. I got one yes, and I got March 10th out of that. One year. Yes, yeah, man, that shit was so dope. Hey, bring it back. Hey, bring a clip. <laughs> we coming back. We coming back. You know Put a clip on the live so they can see what they missed. It, if it, you missed it. I mean, but we coming back. We coming no, back. We going to Nashville this time. We going to Cashville this time. Yeah. Uh, hey, and shout out to everybody on this live right now checking us out. You know what I'm saying? They care about what we talking about. That's dope. Man, I got that Dougie boy on here. Bless this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got my yeah. dog talking in the building. Uh, my yeah. dog, Willie Ham, ill will. You know what I'm saying? Love to y'all. Uh, the thing was, oh, my dog, Elmira Zone, Mr. Flynn in the building. Love, love, love. Salute to all the kings and queens that pulled up. So what I wanted to touch on was that my decision-making process, bruh, I promise you it's not about confidence, it's about faith. 
Yeah. So if I had to sh give you a straight answer of so your confidence I, is faith, then well, my That's confidence is in the faith. It's not in the decision. Yeah. Because if it was just the decision, bro, I'd be second guessing myself all day. If it was just Most me, definitely. God is orchestrating these steps. He's telling me, hey, listen, if you do that, I'm finna tug on your spirit to make you. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, empty your hands so I can give you a blessing, nigga. I'm finna give you a bad dream tonight <laughs> about what you're trying to do. Yeah. No, because it happened just last night. Yeah. I had the worst dream about what I wanted to do next. But I yeah. already know that was God sending me the vision of what was to come of my decision. Most definitely. And I ain't even touch it. Didn't make yeah. none of them phone calls. Yeah. You know what I'm man. saying? And I was just taking a job. Yeah. Man, come on, give me something, man. Give me something. Job for good give money. me something. I got you, big dog. Give me something, man. You done hype me up, man. I love this yeah. shit. So, <laughs> excuse me what's for your cussing. biggest fear in reference to committing to a woman? Please. This is question for everybody that just stepped in here. This is question for question. Yeah. He digging into my mind. I'm digging into his. You know what I'm saying? He yeah, he's trying that. to turn my my. He he he, he hit me where I feel like you're winning right now. Cause you're making me dig, bro. You making nah, me dig. I feel like you're winning right now. You've been. You think, of, you think I'm winning? Shit, I don't know. I feel like, like you're winning right now. Mix. You the man. So me with with I that question it. right there, um, and I'm gonna speak in general when I say it, but I'm talking about myself too, though. So don't get it twisted. Um. I feel like our biggest fear as far as black people in general with this question is when we have opportunity on the table, we sometimes look at the negative first before we look at the positive. So, um, you know, it, it might be a new job or something like that. And it's like, or I'm, I'm gonna stick to the, I'm gonna stick to the question. So you might you might have a woman that that you love, you know, y'all been doing good, steady, a couple of years, whatever the case may be, ain't nothing going wrong. You know, it's a couple of argument here, argument there, or just a disagreement. It ain't nothing too big. Nothing y'all can't get over. Um, but when it comes to like committing and marriage and things like that, it's like we look at the negative first, like, man, damn, what if I marry her and she change up on me or what if, uh, what if this ain't right? What if that ain't right? What if this go wrong? What if that go wrong? You know, until we have a, a friend or a, or something like that to tell us, like, bro, it's all right, man. Like, like, what if we win? What if you take the ch chance to win? You know, um, I feel like that's the that's a part of trauma. You know, it might be your it might be your auntie or your mama or something. They like. You might want to do a business and they're like, boy, don't man, don't do that shit. Uh fuck. You, you ain't finna, man, you ain't finna make it nowhere. Uh man, you better go get a job and, and stack a 401k and and do that. Like, and it you say it so much and it manifests in your brain to the point where you start believing it. And you give up on your dream. Like rapping, you might be a rapping motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You might be 16, 17, rapping your ass out. And everybody in your community telling you you can rap, and then you go home and your your grandmama tell you or your mama tell you, man, boy, you ain't finna make it nowhere, man. Don't be, man, that's shit foolish. Man, man, do this, do this, do that. They telling you what they want you to do, what what was successful for them and their generation. Um, and I feel like that's what it is with with um committing. Like we think of shit like, man, what if she do me like this? So you might've had your heart broke before, like we was talking about earlier. You know, you might be holding on to that. That's trauma. Man, you can't worry about that. You know, what if you pick the wrong person and, and you gotta pick somebody else and get him a chance? How you gonna not give the person that you with now a chance because of what you went through with the person before them? They did that to you before you, you know what I'm saying? Not them. So that's where faith come in. So you got to have faith in order to commit. That's a part of it. But oh. I feel like that's the that's the biggest thing about commitment is 
man, we, we tend to look at the negative side before we look at the positive side of anything. That's a truth. Uh, Miss Montez, she says, uh, Jermaine, I see the gas in you. I'm on go mode 100% of the time. That's what drew me to you in the first place. I appreciate you, Queen. I appreciate you. Uh, the thing is, uh, the gas in me, it ain't always gas. Like, I be hurting for real. I be sitting back thinking, damn, is this shit going to work? Like That's the human side of me saying, I got to go at least try it. I ain't allowed. I ain't scared to fail, though. Can't be. I'm not afraid for it not to work. Because what's that, what, what that's going to tell me is go another way. You could do bigger and better things. I got a problem with thinking too small sometimes. When big God is letting me breathe right now without thinking about it. I'm breathing right now, and I don't have to think about the inhale or exhale. You just you've been doing God it all is. your life. That's how big God is. Is that I don't even got to think about breathing. Yeah. But it's happening. And I'm speaking, right? Thank you for that that comment, Miss Montez. Uh, Myra's on. He said, "Not a fear, but a fact in my situation. I was in when I was in the situation to better us. She didn't have my back, and that really effed me up. And I'm finally divorced this year. Here's the thing. Well, I'm gonna let Star speak on it first, and I'll give it to you. Star, when a woman don't build a man up." as much as he's trying to do for the woman. What do you think a man should do in that situation besides move on? Because he moved on. He said he got a divorce this year. But prior to the divorce, how should a man handle himself? That's, that's, that's hard because he probably didn't even want to get the divorce for real. He probably really loved a woman for real. You know, that's the that's the hard thing. Um but shit, that's all it's all about um being teachable man um if a, per a person sometimes we look at people for the potential that they have instead of the person that they are and um if a person can't be teachable or if they feel like they know everything or you say something and it's it's going in one ear and out the other like sometimes like you just gotta you gotta get on down you know what i'm saying like like what you did i mean i guess you you went through the motions and you felt like that and you made that choice but man us as men we don't want to make that choice for real like we'll like we do shit we'll we'll go out and, and 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 fix our happiness and try to come back to the crib and then shit, you get like you know you get caught or whatever you know you you know say so you gotta deal with that but like Star, hmm. I'm finna call you on this. Let's not act like men don't. Men don't cause the problem. Ignore it and act like well, you asked me about that man. Okay. You know what I'm yeah, 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 yeah. But we you know, got we, we do too. Now, no, I, no. We, what we gotta mention is an even playing field here on my platform, right? Okay. But we gotta mention. How men already be having hoes, using them too. Yeah. Using them. But yeah. then expect the woman to fall in line with his program. Understood. What do we say to that man? Shit, man, you, man, you, man, that man ain't know, man, you know when you're wrong, you know when you're right. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I can't, I can't speak on nobody personally. You know, all I can speak on is the is the situation at hand. So if you if you would if you got a thousand hoes and then you're trying to be with a female and then you're trying to juggle both of them, bro, you're gonna fall. Man, every juggle, I ain't seen a motherfucker that juggle three balls, same time, juggling, juggling. Bro, they gotta stop at some point. Them balls gonna fall at some point. That's what jugglers do. Here's the thing. Are you juggling in truth or are you juggling in secret? Man, That's where the problem lies. Yeah. 
because when they all know what they got to say to you. Yeah. You can say so shit. What you, so what are you really you. asking me though? What are you asking? What I was just saying? saying, I don't want to get lost in blaming the woman. No, I wasn't trying I to blame the make, woman. No, though. no, you didn't do it. You didn't do it. Yeah. You didn't do it. Oh, so you're you saying said, with him. No, to the audience, period. Okay. Don't get it messed up. It's not gender specific. We oh, all man. mess up. We all make mistakes. My point is, it's not when women come along and ain't good for a man. It's also when men come along and they ain't good for the woman. It ain't good enough for a woman. You know what I'm saying? Not they good know. enough for the woman, just not good enough for the situation they in. Yeah. But so we might like, be a woman I'm, out there that want what you doing. But what I'm saying though is that man, it's bigger than just man. It ain't no man. Listen, man, you gotta walk with that person, bro. You gotta walk with that person through them changes. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not the same as I was at 16. You know what I'm saying? From when I was 21, from when I was Hold 28. On. Chill right there. We're going too far. Chill right there. Yeah. Did I ask you the last question or you asked me? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember for real. <laughs> I don't remember. No, nah, I asked you the last question. So this is your question. Okay. Oh, what the? F okay. Uh, no, 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 no. That's me to you. Okay, you're right. What's your biggest fear in reference to committing to a woman? Did we do that? Was it? the last question? That's what was it? Okay, so we gonna go right here. It is on you. Okay. What makes you help people as much as you do? Oh fuck! They go back to Big Mama. Uh, Big Mama and my mama. Uh, those are the sweetest ladies I ever met in my entire life. Like, I didn't know love for real until I watched them operate. Uh, my daddy, I ain't gonna take nothing from him. Real deal gentleman. I don't take him out the equation. I don't know how to be a gentleman. I'm taking to the streets. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to go figure it out from the from what was cool, the drug dealers, the the pimps, the max, the I'm 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 taking that route if my daddy don't exist, right? So I gotta show him a hundred percent love because he said you are your own man, ain't no group of men finna make you one. Yeah, cause they gonna even judge you when you don't stand up. So it all boils back down to you at the end of the day, right? But for this question, what makes you want to help people as much as you do, it's in me. It's not on me. It's in me, it's not on me. You know what I'm saying? So now, where that takes me is my mom been a giver for so long, for so long. She's been a giver. My grandma, well before her, she's been a giver, just giving it up. I know they went in the red, broke their necks, broke their necks to take care of everybody around them and soaking up that game and seeing it. I didn't understand it at first. I did not understand it. I'm like, why would you ever give to somebody that ain't never done for you? Why would you ever give it to somebody that ain't never done for you? Whole time, what I didn't realize, they were grooming me for more. Blessing to you, Mr. Jason. I see you, brother. Blessing to you. Uh, the reason I give and want to help people as much as I do is because I have a vision. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my vision in short. My, my vision in short is that some people make millions or want to make millions. Some people want to make billions, right? Just to take care of their family or generations of family. And that's beautiful. I love that. My vision is far beyond that. You get me to the billionaire status and I'm telling you the impact and the trajectory of people's lives will change 
far beyond my family. Because I understand the world lives, the world is bigger outside of my my family and generation. It's, it's much bigger than just me. I want to see all of us winning whatever winning looks like to you. Uh, you could be the best fry guy in the world, right? But you can't get that job. But because billionaire Jermaine bought the McDonald's, you're in that McDonald's frying up everybody fries. You know what I'm saying? You could be the best trash man in the world that the world's ever seen. I bought the company. If I can't teach you to own it or to run it, you're the best trash man on the street and it's getting done. So my impact is not about making you who I am. It's about making your own dreams come true. I want to impact people to the point to where their dreams come true, not mine. I can't push what I love onto somebody else. I cannot do that. Because if I do that and everybody becomes the same thing, a owner or a CEO, you know what I'm saying, or something like that, how is the world going to run if everybody doing the same thing? We're not supposed to be doing the same thing. That's not how this works. So for me, multi-millionaire, billionaire status means I, I have a prayer. It's a small part in my prayer that's consistent. And it says, Lord, bless me. This is what I say out of my mouth. Bless me so that I may be able to bless others. It's never been about me. <laughs> Real shit. It's never been about me. Yeah. But that comes from my, my granny. Some people call it granny, but big mama and my mama and my daddy. They ain't been nothing but givers. And I got to thank them for that. I, I appreciate it because the feeling I get when I help somebody. And I'm going to tell you right now, people done put me in the red. People done fucked me over along the way. They done did me bad. Bro. And I broke my neck for them. Right? I'm going to tell you why I wasn't so emotional about it. It's because I never went in with the expectation to receive in return. I never went in saying if I, it wasn't an investment in the front of my mind. It was an investment in God's eyes, but for me, it wasn't an investment. It was just to give. It was, I can help you. Hold one second. Let me do it. Right. Yeah. It wasn't a trade. It wasn't an expectation to feel the gratification that you got so that I can feel it too later on. Yeah, and then I, I want to say this on that. Um, like, you know, we always got the saying that uh, God is working. And yeah. He does work. That's what he do. You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, when God working, the devil working too. So when you um, sometimes when your faith is strong and the devil can't get to you, he might try to get you through other things, other vessels like your your kids or, you know, a person that you love, um, you know, a bill, anything, you know what I'm saying? And um, that, man, you gotta, you gotta know that too. So once you figure that out, then everything will be all good. You know what I'm saying? Just know the devil working too. You know what I'm saying? God ain't the only one working, so. Yeah. That's all I have to say. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's it. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. So, nah, but, um, yeah, for real though, man, that, that shit, man. That's that's life in general. Like these are things that I had to learn because, man, you trying to figure out things with, um, man, trying to figure out life, man, that's hard, you know. And then you sometimes you don't have that person to guide you in that direction, be your guider. So you got to guide yourself through the people that you know, 
you got to separate the good from the bad and, and critique it, you know? And so, you know. That's all I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I ain't fucking with you, man. So look, man, your question to me. All right. So, um. Oh no, that's my question to you. I'm type up. What's going on? Do you think that there's a truly a gender war currently, or do you think it's just a distraction? Because we see all over the internet where women are angry at men, men are angry at women. We constantly going at each other, telling each other everything we're not, right? It's never an uplifting moment, social media, via social media. Do you think this is a, a, a real gender war or this is propaganda set up for distraction to keep us apart? I feel like the propaganda is the gender war of... Uh, how do I even say this? Man, me personally, I feel like the reason why we go back and forth on internet and all that shit is because like, we don't really have no guidance. Like as far as what a real man is, what a real woman is. Um, we taking bits and pieces, broken people are teaching broken people. You know what I'm saying? So hell, you might be a you might be a little girl growing up trying to be a lady, but your mama broken. So she teaching you all the, the shit that she feel like is right or wrong. And you know, this isn't that and vice versa, you know what I'm saying? Men or it might be absent fathers or things like that. So it's like um it's like it, it's hard to figure out what's real and what's fake. Like you gotta know the difference between what you feel and what's real. You know, I heard that on ATL the movie. Like the, the shit was funny and whatever, you laughing and looking and joking and shit, but when that man told his nephews, like, man, you gotta know the difference between what you feel and what's real, man. Like I took that and I lived with it. I, I abide by that. You know what I'm saying? Because Man, this shit out here wicked, you know, and, and we don't know too much of nothing, but we trying to figure it out. Like we just now got access to knowledge through the internet. But it's like, say, say if I post some knowledge or something about um about uh uh just anything, you know what I'm saying, knowledgeable, like. I'm gonna get two or three likes or a motherfucker might comment on it or something like that. But if I post post some silly shit or a motherfucker shaking their ass, hell, everybody is sharing it. And, oh man, woo the woo and this, this and that. Like that's that's the Oh, you mean like my page? <laughs> <laughs> you silly. For real though, bro. Man, for real. You mean like my page? Yeah. Man, you post some silly shit, some goofy shit, man. Motherfuckers on that shit. Okay. Motherfuckers on that shit. You know, you that. post, you post something. Stop. Um, Stop. We're gonna move on. Go ahead. That's your question for me. Yeah. So, um, are you willing to? Are you willing to go through a woman's changes if you meet the right one? It's inevitable. Uh, I think we all evolve. I think it's naive to go in a relationship, commit to uh, building together, but don't expect her to change. You see what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. I made that mistake at 18, getting married, right? That ended mm -hmm. horribly because I was so young and didn't understand love or relationships, right? Okay. And so I did her the service first, being the leader in the relationship because I had no idea what being a leader was at 18. Second thing is no way I will ask a woman to do something for me that I'm not willing to get in the trenches and do for her. So if I'm asking you to go with me through my changes 
along the line. It's crazy to look her in the face and say, will you go through my changes? But then I shun her the moment she started to change. Now, is there a line? Absolutely. Absolutely. We all have boundaries. We all have things we're not willing to withstand or not willing to even go through with people, right? But if we're talking about the right one, I think that communication will eliminate the frustration. We talked about it before we went through it. So here we are. Now we stand in the test of time. So, so where's the line through marriage, though? For marriage, for me? If I do marriage, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it. I'm saying like point blank, like, bro, you saying it's a line? Yeah, it's a line for me as a man. Yeah. Okay, so so say if you get married, oh, you can't you, fuck my neighbor and tell me you were just going through some changes. <laughs> you you see what I'm saying? That's for better or for worse, nigga. What you gonna do? Yeah, yeah, for worse. But here's what I'm saying about worse. Even my Bible tell me I don't have to stay through infidelity. Yeah, most even I'm Bible just, I'm just throwing, I'm throwing. No, no, I, I get what you're saying, but even yeah. my Bible tell me a woman don't have to stay through my abuse. Yeah, most definitely. I'm just using it for both sides. Yeah, that's that's when the game changed. You're right. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But I have instruction. Yeah. And whether if if a woman is equally yoked with me. Mm -hmm. We're reading the same instruction so we understand where we're both going and we communicate well. So if you play me in that manner, you already knew what the outcome was going to be. You clearly yeah. wasn't here with me. If you emotionally cheating, because what do we know about women? Talk to a nigga for a long time before they ever get they self up. Yeah, yeah. Right? But the conversation, but the conversation be so steep. If I ever see it, I'm slighted because then was the times you were supposed to be talking to me. I didn't know what he know. How was we ever supposed to fix this relationship when you was telling him and not me? Yeah. That is why I judge so harshly on women saying I got a male best friend that's not gay. Yeah, but then at the but same the time, you, like, bro, but but so okay, so you might be going through one of your situations to where you're changing, and and in your change, you're not understanding her craft for help. So the next best thing is the person that's the that's that's trying to get close to her. Here's what I understand. I never been with an ugly woman or unattractive woman. Don't say what, Miss Tanya. Now, hold on. Let's get to this comment before I make my next. One. She said, ah, ah, "Don't say that, Jermaine Hall. Correct me where I'm wrong. I like to be challenged. I love to be challenged. So finish your statement, and I'm gonna continue here until you finish your statement." Miss Tanya, because I respect all of y'all in the comments and I appreciate y'all being here. But what I will continue to say is when I go through changes, bro, my changes are not uh, sporadic. It's been happening. Right? Mm -hmm. It ain't never no emergency shit that I just spring on you that you just can't deal with. We've been new. I'm behind on this car note and they about to repo my yeah. shit because I've been yeah. talking to you about it. You see what I'm saying? We've been new. Whatever debt is there, we've been new. Such and such got this going on and I'm finna help, but it's going to put us in the red. Baby, are you okay with that? Or are you fucked up with it? You see what I'm saying? I don't never spring nothing on nobody, so don't spring shit on me. So what if you shut down socially? I don't shut down socially. You, but you can't say that because you ain't never been there. Yes, I have. I never shut down in a relationship socially ever, not once. You but I'm saying you ain't never. So, so what if you know who shut down? Ahead. Women ahead. shut down on me. <laughs> but when I found out, 
it was because they had something else going on. Uh, Do you know what I'm saying? I, 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 no, what I'm saying is I've never been the non-vocal type. So her next comment was, Miss Tanya, she said the male best friend comment. Oh, no, that, that's, that shit dead. I ain't <laughs> bullshit, dead. but I ain't bullshit. I ain't <laughs> that shit dead. I ain't I ain't that shit. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead and speak your, speak your piece, little mama. No, no, I want you to hear it. I want to hear what you think about what she go said. Go ahead. You want me to go? Yeah. Okay, so with the male best friend comment, the reason I was so harsh is that I understand I witnessed it with my own eyes. I went to a thread in a group that had over 50,000 comments, right? So that's got to be relevant because it's a lot of different people from a lot of different places. Clearly ain't just this city. You know, actually, it's based out of North Carolina. And then a whole bunch of people from New York and Cali was in there. That's what I noticed, right? But the status, the status was talking about gay men. They be fucking their best friends. Do you know what them 50,000 comments from women said? And I went to the, a lot of these pages to make sure it wasn't bots. Oh, man, gay men got the best D in the world. And the, <laughs> best, part is, the best part was me reading women talking about how they niggas never caught on because the nigga was gay all day, smashing them at night. That's filthy. Right. Bill D, because I didn't know it was a real thing. And I'm not, I'm not gay bashing neither. But we not gay bashing. What yeah, I'm nah, saying, we're not gay the bashing. woman was able to hide it. Yeah. Because of who he is in the yes, life, yes. right? Now, most people would call it bisexual. That's bisexual, right? We ain't gay bashing. I'm saying how they was able to hide it. Option. The male best friend, if he ain't fully gay, because I'm saying in a different light, it ain't got nothing to do with sex. What I'm saying is, if you can confide in that man, why you can't confide in me in this relationship? Where did we lose communication? That you can't confide in me even in trouble sometimes. If we working on this relationship to build to the next level, which is marriage, you telling me you finna create an environment where we can't talk? We ain't going nowhere. Yeah, that's wild. We ain't going nowhere if we can't talk in the worst times. Yeah, that's wild. And if in the worst times you can't trust me or I can't trust you, we real deal ain't going nowhere. Is that the same for a female best friend? How many dudes you know with a female best friend? I know a couple because they came on my live before and said it. But guess what they also admitted? And they talked about being attracted to each other or one or the other being attracted to each other. Yeah. It just didn't work out. Yeah. So that was my point. Y'all, men ain't built to be your best fucking friend. Nah, we try to fuck. We are biologically made to want to hurt you. We try, we try to nail something. Baby, I don't want to be around you. Be your fucking best friend if I like you. Best friend shopping. That, that's why I said early gay. They do the things that the women do, right? And don't want nothing to do with no coochie. Probably tried it when they were so young and realized, yeah, I'm going to swing on the other side, right? But I ain't so convinced. Because what I know about me is I like communication. So baby, when times get hard and you create a pattern of running to another man, man, we finna have a hard time here. Finna have a hard time here. Because clearly where your heart is is with this man. Because <laughs> I know niggas that have waited over 20 years to smash. I'm dead. I'm one of them. That man have a 20 years, 20 bombs. I'm one of them. To tear that ass up. Man, what? Got it out the way. <laughs> Got it out the way. Man, come on with a question, man. You hell, man. Get off them people. Got it out the way. But we're going to get to another comment. 
Miss Tanya says the same for female best friend. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I know chick finna had let you let you have no female friend, bro. Yeah, so why should we if, let if you she, have if she let you have a female friend, then she try to fuck your girl. Hello, I'm to fuck home girl, man. For real. Hey, that shit hey, ain't man, now we talking tonight. That shit ain't done. That shit ain't nothing, bro. Now we talking tonight. Yeah, yeah. Real shit. See, like a dude, like if a dude have a female friend, that's because he tried to nail her and she wouldn't let him nail her and he know he ain't got no chance. So he like, fuck it, I'll just be cool with this motherfucker. That's a female friend. In my eyes. What you think? I think you crazy as hell. <laughs> I think you just been sipping. <laughs> nah, I'm dead ass serious. I know you serious. That's why I think you crazy as hell. You got your fucking mind. Say it again out loud so I can hear you. Nah, I ain't gonna say it, nope. <laughs> you heard what I said. Please. You Give heard what I said. Back. You heard what I said. It. Okay, so look. Ms. Montez says she's not waiting 20 years for nothing. You also a beautiful woman that don't have to go chasing a man. You sit in the position of men chasing you consistently. Let me tell y'all a secret, ladies, that y'all don't realize yet. I don't know why y'all don't get this. Men do not have, even men with options, don't have as many women as they portray. Hell no. Y'all be blaming imaginary and I'm women. I'm talking about my tax bracket and a couple and, and maybe 60,000 and up more than my tax bracket. We don't have, yes, we charm a lot of women. Yes, absolutely. They're interested. That shit only goes so far, though. But access to, and I mean on demand, we don't have that. But you women with that hot pocket, ma'am. Yeah, with that hot pocket. Filthy. <laughs> they always lined up and ready to go. Most definitely, though. That's that's definitely a, a fact. That's well, a let's fact. be honest here. When you say the 20 years of waiting, baby girl, I'm not talking about every single day, 20 years. Both of yeah. them could have been married twice and divorced. This that third, but he never forgot. That's somebody I want to get my hands on, right? It just spin a block type of 20 mm -hmm. years. It's been a block type of 20 years. Not no consistent, I've been trying to get at you. Yeah. For 20 that's years. how we block. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's the block. Grade. I know women have done it because women have told me, man, I want to fuck him in the ninth grade. We mm -hmm. fought. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And they like, Daddy wasn't impressed. Yeah. He ain't learned nothing in that 20 years. You should have called me. Okay, never mind. Different subject. So now we're gonna move on, man. We're gonna we're gonna segue. We're gonna segue, bro. Uh stop. What up with it? And you did that, so it's my turn. Yeah. No, nope, that ain't it's it. your turn. Big dog. That ain't it. You did that too. Yep. With the ass uh, I gotta ask you this shit, and I don't think you're ready to answer it. How does having a creative blockage make you feel? Because you a rapper and your creative space is writing songs. Yeah. How does that make you feel when you cannot create? That shit really hurt my feelings for real. It really More than a woman? Man, hell yeah, that shit hurt. Cause like, cause you gotta think of the pressure that I be dealing with. Because it's like, for one, I already want to write because that's my getaway. Like that's my, like going to the studio and recording. That's my thing. Like that's like I'm a, I'm long overdue right now. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm supposed to be in the studio tonight. You know, but I ain't got everything that I need done done yet. So I can't even go until I'm fully like I'm one of those type of people. I'm very I critique shit. 
So, you know what I'm saying? But um, then amongst that, your own personal vendettas with yourself, and it's like you got people that, they be like, bro, you need to drop, bro, you need to drop. And then you got kids that's running up singing your songs, and then you in a store and motherfucker like, hey, I say, and then you turn it around and you don't know who it is, or a person that, that you don't know personally, like they're like, hey, bro, you such and such? Yeah, man, I be listening to your music, man, you dope, and like shit like that, that shit, because I be feeling like I be letting them down. You feel like you let them down? Yeah, in a in a sense. Like I ain't doing it purposely, but it's like man, I got I'm a I'm a regular person too. Like I got real shit going on too. Like I man, shit, I got a kid, you know what I'm saying? Bro, a household, like shit, I'm I'm working 40 plus hours a day. Like, like I'm a regular motherfucker like y'all. But I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like I like I wish I could just sit at the house and write songs all day and go to the studio every night and just say, man, that shit ain't is is not realistic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna keep one hundred with you. You know, but I um that's that's also on the flip side of it. That's also my motivation to get my ass and and do what I need to do and get in that studio and record music and put it out for people and. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's well. It's, I want um, you to read this next comment. They say I felt this because I be making beats. Now I haven't cooked up about. I haven't cooked up a beat in about five months. Last time I tried, I couldn't come up with shit. Right, but then he yeah. says, "Star be letting me down by not giving me a feature." Man, that got to be Dollar G. Fuck yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't care who it is. What do you say to that? Nah, man, for real. Honestly, though, shit. Man, we just got to get together, dollar shit. You know, I fuck with you. But, like, man, that shit, man, that shit be real deal hard, though, for real. It be hard, bro. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. All right, man, shit, man, hey. Call it what you want to. This shit serious business, especially when I, like, I, and I speak my life. All right, so. Now, Star, I want to ask you something. I want to ask you something that is probably going to go deeper than it should go, but actually, you're supposed to ask me this, so I got to put you on, but we got Star on the Star, man, what are you doing? My phone cut off. Your my phone bad. cut off. I had a I had a connection uh problem. Sure. Okay. All right. Well look, that's your question to me. And I really don't want you to ask me this for real. So do you want me to ask or not? That's the question. Ask me, but I'm saying uh, okay, yeah, you go on get ready. Hurry up. <laughs> uh how do you know when it's time to let go of someone? Man, fuck. So, in previous experiences, um, I didn't know. I didn't understand one levels of relationships. I didn't understand how much loving yourself is important. Another thing I didn't understand was that communication was the most important part of the relationship versus how you could sexually please me, right? Yeah. So I was so stuck on if you ain't fucking me right, I'm out of here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, today, uh, I know it's time to let you go when my spirit tell me it's time to let you go. It ain't nothing to do with my mind. So my yeah. mind is constantly going. My mind, I'm paying attention. I'm gonna do that pay attention to detail too, right? So my mind might be saying something ain't right. But if my spirit ain't aligned with what my mind saying, I ain't making a move yet, but I am paying attention, right? But my spirit ain't never failed me. A lot of people that are not spiritual, they say it's their gut. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. They just don't Same understand. That. That's, yeah, because that's all in your gut. Yeah, they don't understand that their gut is their spirit. You know what I'm saying? 
Your stomach ain't telling you shit, but you hungry. Yeah. <laughs> or you got a shit. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But so see, that's so tell you when that vibe, that frequency, and everything is unaligned. And see, that's why I asked you that because, like, me as a person, I will take that feeling and I will go ahead. Like, I will feel like. It's a split second decision, man. Let me go ahead and figure something out and I'll make a decision regardless if it's the right one or the wrong one. I figure it out on the way. So like you saying, like with your um with your heart aligned or what you know what I'm saying, whatever, whatever. Like that's that's why I asked you that though, just to get that input on But that's I don't think that's entirely true. Because it took a long time to break up. Nobody breaks up. But I'm not even I'm not even just talking about breakups or relationships. I'm saying like it might be nigga, your oh, friend, to let your anybody know on any level of you know, on any level. Yeah. Okay. So on any level, my spirit always tells me that ain't it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I don't let I don't argue with my spirit no more. I used to. I used to fight it. And then God would take his hand off the situation and I go through all the bad shit. Yeah. Because he like, I told you seven times, maybe even 20, and you win anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He take as soon as he take his hand, he stopped covering me. I get the blunt force trauma. Right? Yeah. Today, yeah. brother, the moment my spirit off, I'm gone. And you ain't got to wonder why I disappeared. Just understand that my spirit spoke. God mm -hmm. told me that ain't it. Most definitely. I don't even be mad when women stop talking to me the first day that they talk to me. I understand that they spirit and their destiny is not tied to me if they can, if they're able to do that. Yeah. So the men that's beating women into submission and, and verbally abusing women in their inbox and all of this other shit, that's because they ain't in tune with themselves. Okay, so what about family? What about friends? What about, you know what I'm saying? I done done it. Jobs. I done cut off family. What you talking about? I'm asking you. You, you know personally, right. though, but you know personally. Family had to go as soon as it threatened my destiny. I love you, but I got to go. Yeah. I love you, but I got to go. You see what I'm saying? Everybody cannot go. Everybody is not tied to your destiny. Everybody doesn't deserve the time that you put in to get to where you're going. They don't get to dictate what God had for you. Right? So the sooner we learn that Hey, listen, love ain't always enough. Man, you in a better space. Yeah, most definitely. In a space. I ain't trying to cut you off from the fruits of my labor. What I'm trying to do is really come up. And if you really love me, you would understand that. Yeah. If you really love me, you would say, I want him better. I'm just not the piece that can help him be better. So let me move out the way and let him do him and salute from the side. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? That's somebody that really loves you, though. I've had to do that. I've had to step aside and say, damn, we used to be tough, kicking it every day, but I can't contribute to where they're going. So I got to leave this person alone to let them get to how high they're traveling. Yeah, it ain't my turn to go to my heights, but it is their turn. Move out the fucking way. Yeah, most definitely. Get out of the way. They don't owe me nothing. Our time, our good times was our good times. We are so entitled as a people as to think thirty years in, all of a sudden I owe you my success. You are you lying to me? You lying to me? Cause when you came up, you ain't come over here and pay now bill I had. You ain't make sure my mom and daddy was straight when they was losing. And you up. You out your fucking mind. If you think I'm going to jeopardize me coming up and coming back to spin the block through a red light to get you 
All I'm going to do is get a ticket for making an illegal U-turn. I'm finna shit on myself when I'm up, coming back, worried about you who wasn't even trying to come up. You just want me to give you a cushion. Let me tell you, the only cushion you need is the one when you lay your head in the bed. You don't need me. Yeah. You don't need me. Because if we was aligned, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Understood. It's your turn or it's my turn, but it ain't always all of our turns. Yeah. I understand that. So when somebody elevating, I'm quick to be doing this. Man, salute. Go. Go, my nigga. If you ever need me, call me. Go. What you worried about me for? Go. I'm on my journey. You go. It's your turn. Star, if you take off tomorrow morning, if some for some strange-ass reason, you hit a billion streams on your music tomorrow, and every record label, and every Jay-Z, and everybody calling you tomorrow, you know the first thing I'm going to say? Bro, you need to talk to your girl and figure out how y'all going to navigate this problem. But do not come on my show. Do not call me or come over. Your destiny just your trajectory of life just changed. It just changed, but you don't owe me nothing. You don't owe me nothing, bro, except Air Blue Moon. I just want to know you grounded. You still living for God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And your family straight, but you don't owe me nothing. You did that. You did the work. Go reap the benefits of your labor. You see what I'm saying? Don't call me talking about, bro. Uh, yeah, I got multi millions, bro. You want to buy a house? Man, get the hell on. Go away. You better be trying to see what your old lady need and that baby need. Because you already know the rest of the family coming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't adding to that number. So, no, 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 no. When it's time to let go of somebody, do it. Do it today. Don't even hesitate. Leaving somebody alone is not bad. It's looked at in a negative way because the person getting left is the one speaking the loudest. But the person doing the leaving is a relief. Yeah. Because they're on their destiny. They on their journey. You only getting left because you ain't doing shit. Bro, I ain't never got left and I was on my best behavior. Yeah. Never. I was on bullshit. <laughs> I only got left because I wasn't doing enough, bro. I wasn't doing enough. Now that I'm doing enough, I keep meeting people that's going up. I ain't meeting nobody that's pulling me back down. I literally don't meet people that's trying to drag me down because I don't live like that, bro. Yeah. I don't live like that. I'm only meeting people like you that's saying, today, bro, get your ass up. It's 6 a.m. Yeah. What's on the agenda? What we yeah. doing? What yeah, we you know I'm calling. Hey, did you, know you call my buddy? We got that locked in? You know I'm calling. only meet those people. Get your ass up. <laughs> yeah. You do Real that. Shit, Get your black Real ass shit. up, bro. Why you still and so and, and a lot of times, because I done did that plenty of times, more than one occasion, I'm on the way to work. You know what I'm saying? I call you shit. I don't know if you sleep or not. You always it don't matter if you sleep like a mother, you wake up, you answer that phone. And sometimes I just need that motivation to take my ass on in. And I, I blame it on, I blame the motivation on you. Man, get up, man. What's up, man? Got them what we doing, rise or grind. Whole time I'm saying it to myself, but I'm, I know you're gonna puke it in me. Thing is, it, it's it's not uh, on me; it's in me. Yeah, so now the I can't same even, for me. Yeah, I can't even afford to sit back and relax and be like, like I took this time off to go film and do my shit. But you know what? I was bullshitting. I'll be honest. I was. Bull I could have still been doing lives. I I literally could have. But I'll focus on the character. Whole time I'm like, in my time off, I had a lot of time off. We talked. 
Yeah, most definitely. Could still, could still be going live, but guess what I was thinking? Dog, that, that confidence question you asked me earlier. Yeah. I was feeling like if I had to research topics, find people to interview, all these things that I know going with doing a show, I was like, I'm finna overwhelm myself and have to go to work and have to do it. Bro, I had the mental capacity to do it all and I shorted myself and I don't like it. Man, now you can't I'm say that either though. Know. Bro, you ain't, man. You no, ain't I'm telling you. Person. But I'm telling you personally, I never do that shit again. I yes. never to work. But myself. at that time, but you got to understand at that time, man, you had to do that to do your self evaluation. But that's that ain't what I was time. doing. But it's an elevation stage. Facts. What you Facts. did right there was an elevation stage. But see, we'll be hard on ourselves because of our elevation stage because it's not going up in our mental. It's stagnant. But you got to understand, you got to rest to live. See, a lot of people don't know that. I bet a lot of hustlers don't know that. I bet a lot of motherfuckers that work 12 hours, seven days a week don't know that. You, in order to stay alive, you have to rest. It's a part of the grind. Once you realize that, that's not stagnant no more. That's a man. That's your man. Truck drivers got a, a rest station. They pull over. They use the bathroom. They can park and run their truck and sleep until they need to get their ass back up and get their load off. But you got to rest. Uh, man, you watch football, basketball, and people got to rest. You know what I'm saying? It's a part of it. Don't ever forget that. Can't forget that. I think I think rest for me be my praying stage. When I'm yeah. in the corner, corner, that's a lot of rest, right? But if God waking me up 2 in the morning, and I don't know why I'm up, just up. Mm-hmm. Bro. My brain ain't gonna let me go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Be like, I got something for you. So here I am praying. Here I am contemplating. Here I am creating. Here I am figuring out the next way. Okay, that didn't work. I gotta make some shake over here. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So where people tell me to rest, it's hard to explain how I can't. Yeah. Because I'm not where I consistently want more. And I'm going to be honest with you. That's what makes me afraid of relationships because I consistently want much more. I got to meet somebody that wants more all the time if I ain't already yes. met. You know what I'm yes. saying? I always want more. Like, what you mean? You Is it bad that somebody met? They already successful in what they're doing, even if it's just a substitute teacher. It ain't bad. That's fucked up to tell somebody that what they're doing, the thing that they love, ain't enough. But I think like that. Like, okay, you're a substitute teacher, but why you don't want to be the superintendent? That's toxic as fuck, bro. Yeah, because you don't know her journey. You don't know what she went through to get to where she is. Exactly. But, but, at, the same time, but at the same time, though, you got to understand that might be that push that she need to get there. So understand y'all position. For sure. For sure. That's just dead on it. I guess they come with communication as well. Yeah, real shit. Communication as well. Miss Confetti, blessings to you. She say love seeing black men thrive. Man, we love you too, 100%. What's up, fat her ass nigga, man? So, uh, Miss Tanya, she said some of us got successful faster than we planned. No, you, yeah, you planned it, but it's something I was told a long time ago by the old head. They said, you want to tell God a joke? Tell them your plans. <laughs> That's some funny shit. I'm going to tell you. Right? That fucked me I'm up. Tell you. <laughs> Straight up. You want to tell God a joke? The funniest joke ever is to he tell him. Tell him your plans. And watch how he laughs like he ain't big God. Like, uh. That's he all you thought you had in you? Watch how I'm finna push you today. Yeah. Watch how you finna That's break real, all the yellow tape and become everything I planned for you, right? So now for me, bro, I want to get to this last question, man, and we'll close this thing out. Uh, you've been dope for two hours on me. I, I promised you an hour and 30, but you did two hours. Yeah. Uh, so do you think toxicity 
Do you think toxicity is an attractive trait to embrace? Would you like to me, for me to expound on that? About what I mean. Go ahead. Okay, so what I see a lot of is a lot of men is like, man, I want my girl to be argumentative. I want her to be spicy, man. Get at me. Cuss me clean out if I ain't doing right. Do you think that toxic traits are attractive as hell these days versus men that beg women to just be agreeable? Do you think it's bigger for people to want toxicity these days? And I know we lived our days of hoeing and loved the toxic shit, but the toxic yeah. shit is what we grew out of. Do you think that's a bigger thing to embrace these days? Man, I feel like damn, I'm trying to think of how to say this shit the best way possible for real. Like, in a way, yeah, because it's like you want that you want that feistiness you know what i'm saying you don't want no no push over chick you know what i'm saying you want a, a woman to speak up ground like or talk that shit to you like sometimes it make you feel like you know what I'm saying? she like hell nah you know what i'm saying you ain't finna be around them hoes or whatever do this this and that like but then you gotta think too like nine times out of ten a man is gonna look for the woman that was closest to his mama or what he know from his mama. So maybe your mama was toxic. You know what I'm saying? Maybe your mama was with that shit and, and talk shit and cuss a motherfucker out or cuss your ass out. You know what I'm saying? So you're looking for that same type of comfort. Um, It's broadcasted on TV 24 seven, you know, uh, but I don't think, I don't think a man won't like 24 seven toxic this or a woman you know what i'm saying we just want to like it's kind of like you want a motherfucker to play like that but then you want them to be like they are like they were, you want them to be sweet to you but you want them to talk that toxic shit you know what i'm saying like 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 you might want a nigga to tell you man girl quit playing with me before i go across your head with this goddamn sonic you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's funny but then it's like it's kind of toxic but then it's like you know, man, that man ain't gonna put his hands on you neither. So I think they they look we look for toxic shit until it's real deal toxic. We want the the um but what would you what would you say it is? Uh so what I see in this world today is that it's attractive to leave a relationship more than stay and work on one. Uh everybody with the help of the internet is always looking for better because there's always somebody that seemingly looks better on the internet right so where we're standing in a world where a man can be more attractive or a girl can be more attractive right next door down the street or around the corner or one state over it's hard to stay in something and fight when it's consistent options of there is better but is it better is the grass greener because you don't know nothing but they take good pictures and put good filters you never know you don't know nothing but they speak well yeah because because like even even if oh, you feel oh, oh, like oh, 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 oh. let me land let me land let me close the the problem i got is that because i speak well have you seen me under pressure have you seen me under pressure? Have you seen me down and out? Do you think you can handle my mental state when I ain't so good? Right? Uh, baby girl, you look good in that gym outfit. But your shit stank too. In some area of life, can I handle that? People ain't taking time to get to know each other, right? Mm -hmm. They ain't taking time to get to know each other. So my problem is when men say, yeah, I like a feisty woman. Bro, you got to draw a line on it. Because you telling these women to disrespect you like it's a yeah, fetish. Yeah. But then now you done bowed your fist up, punched her in the eye. Now you got to fight all seven of her brothers or, or potentially die about her. Yeah. Because 
You thought it was attractive to say, I like a spicy woman who stand on her own too. When really what you were saying, I like a classy woman that ain't too friendly with every man that gives her a compliment. She can take a compliment and say, I thank you, I appreciate you. And if he goes further, I got a man move around. That's something we can respect, but I don't want you to come home and give me the business over your day. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? Do you love a woman that gives you the business? Hell no. Don't talk to me crazy because I ain't do it to you. Yeah. Cause that's when reality kick in, though. See, that's when the reality you, kick in. When it's when it when it's when it's when it ain't cool to you no more, and it's cool to her. Then it's or vice versa. Nah, this what we are. That's what you asked for. Miss Montez says I was in a toxic relationship, and that's why I've been single almost four years. When you deal with that, it brings you down mentally, emotionally, and psychologically, etc. If someone brags about themselves being toxic because people think it's normal, it's not. That's automatic red flag for her. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I agree with that. I believe that if you bragging about loving the shit that make you feel bad on the inside every day, oh, yeah, you you issues you ain't worked out yet, problems you need to iron out, men, you ain't lining up. But see, that's why I said we don't have nothing to go out for, man. We need a men's and women's class. You feel what I'm saying? Because a lot of people don't like, like, man, we don't know how to be men and women. We, like I said, it's broken people. Shit, teaching broken people. Mm. So, like, your interpretation of a man or a woman ain't relevant because, shit, you don't know. All you know is the, the man or the woman that you cling to that you feel like did the best in your eyes. But they might have been teaching you toxicity the whole time. You don't even know it. Your mama could have been teaching you to your mama. Your daddy might be gone. Goddamn, you don't even understand. Like, you like, damn, my daddy was never there the whole time. Your mama was toxic. Mm -hmm. Or vice versa, your daddy was toxic. Your mama had to get away from this motherfucker. For like, sure. Man, we need to, and we got to start with the youth because they are future. You know what I'm saying? Because we teaching it to them. We it's trickling down. Mm -hmm. So let's break the cycle here. And even even grown people like I ain't just saying that start with the kids. Start with grown people too. Shit, you got to bring the kids. Like we all need to come together and have some type of class to teach men and women literacy. What's mm -hmm. a good woman? What's not? What's what's tolerated? What's not? What's a wife? What's not? What's a husband? What's not? We gotta separate the two. And Next figure week, out what we want to do. I apologize. I didn't mean to cut you off. You good? No, you good. Okay, so next week I'm coming with a show about abandonment. Uh, it's gonna be deep. I haven't quite chosen my my guest yet, but abandonment is coming next week from a lot of different angles. And what you just talked about, that class and adults teaching themselves and us uh, making ourselves more aware of the trauma around us versus in us and how we uh, choose to progress, it ties into what I got coming next week. Uh, before we get out of here, because we've done our time here, uh, give the people a positive word, man. I always like to leave positive word with the people, man. Man. I'm gonna tell you what my OG Teddy Bud told me every time he see me, man. Keep God first. I just keep God first, man. You are gonna figure it out. I appreciate that, ladies and gentlemen. What I want to tell you is, y'all could have been anywhere in the world, but y'all chose to be right here with your boy Jermaine Hall on the Jermaine Hall Show. I'm back every Thursday. I know. It used to be Tuesday. Y'all love the Tuesdays. I'm going to do Thursdays. Uh, what I want to tell y'all is you can be anybody you want to be in this world. You are not minute. Don't count yourself out.
I don't care how low you are, get your ass back up. What I do this for is impact. It's about impact. So I want this to touch you and then in turn touch somebody that you may know or come in contact with. One thing I want you to learn from me and any guest that I have is that you are bigger and you are stronger than however you feel, right? You're bigger, you're stronger than however you, you feel. Thank y'all for being here. Y'all could have been anywhere in the world, but y'all chose to be right here with me. And I love y'all for that. Y'all be blessed in this world. Star, man. Love. Number love, my brother. Number love. Everybody that was tuning in, man. It's number love to y'all, man. Stay blessed, stay up, man. Stay positive. And keep the best. Be blessed, man. Gina, thank you. And love to all of y'all out there. We out of here.